Welcome artistic visitors, subscribers, and friends. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you a tutorial of a painting I called it Soulful Journey, and I focus on pushing color. I know a lot of you request that, and you'd love to grow more in that. Now, this is a video that I had primarily done on my Patreon page for my patrons. Each month, I have decided that for my patrons, I'll pick one painting and uh, for artists who give me their permission, and I'll give a critique. It's very helpful not only to that artist, but other artists who like to learn a little bit more. Now, she submitted a beautiful reference photo and painting, and uh, I think I was able to um, give her some constructive criticism to an already great painting, and her name was Belle Jackson. Thank you, Belle, and look at this beautiful reference photo. So I used her reference photo to recreate the painting and give some suggestions. So for my Monet Cafe channel, I don't forget about you guys, giving you free videos as well, I thought I would also give you a little lesson here of that process. For this painting, I used a piece of UART sanded paper that I have taped to my board here. And I also, as an underpainting, I used the Neo Color 2 wax pastels. I've used these in other videos before. They, they really work great for an underpainting. You'll see as I work, uh, when you add water or alcohol, um, they really brighten up. I'm showing here that if you don't have any wax pastels, you can use a regular pastel. You don't have to have that product. And if you do use just a regular pastel, kind of ignore what I'm doing here with my hands, but if you use a regular pastel just to tone your paper, all you have to do is lightly glaze over your surface and then add water or alcohol. So here I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video because it's not really about the underpainting, um, but you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. So I'll kind of talk over this. So I really just use two, uh, really two of these Neo Color pastels. And in this, you'll see what might not be making sense right now is I'm giving instructions for my patrons um, on just some drawing techniques and things and, and kinda how to sketch out um, your landscape for an underpainting. Um, but with these water-soluble wax pastels, right now you can see I'm using the sides of them. I'm using the cooler blue for things that are uh, further away and for the road. And what will happen, again, I'll just kind of let this go with some music in a minute, but what will happen is you'll see when I add the water, uh, I use water in this one, but sometimes I use alcohol, really just because alcohol dries faster, and, and I think it gives a little bit of a different effect, but for this one I used water, and when I add the water, you'll be able to see how it really brings these colors to life. Now, again, I wanted to reiterate that um, you don't have to use these. You can use a regular pastel. Uh, you could use two pastel colors like this if you want. I did use a third there, a little bit of a lighter pink, but I really didn't need to. Um, and then you could do the same thing and just um, use water or alcohol to blend it in. And basically what I described in this video um, or this painting tutorial was I used colors in this very different from what the reference photo was. The reference photo was mostly greens and blues. And so an underpainting is really great when you, when you can use a color that's, there's not a lot not a lot of that color in the reference image. It makes it um, really glow behind the final pastels that you put down. So now I'm going to start adding the water um, I just use a cup of water, um, paper towels, and I like to use the biggest brush that I can use. This keeps me from getting fussy and detailed, and really for beginning stages of a painting and underpainting, it's about big shapes, not about detail. So again, I'm gonna speed this up. You can kind of watch the underpainting process as I add the water, and then we'll get started with the painting.
here are my pastel selections for this particular painting. I wanted to make sure I got some good darks um, and I did add a couple of more darker values. Uh, my darks are on the upper right. Um, on the upper left are my sky colors. Uh, I've got some good neutrals for pushing back some of the distant bushes and trees. I've got a little bit of that orangey and peach for the road. Um, so ignore my pointing here because now I'm doing a voiceover to what I was teaching for my Patreon video. Um, so anyway, I think I added, mm, I don't know, maybe five or six more by the time I was done with this painting. And here's where the, the paper has dried and I'm beginning to add my darks. I first just get that, it's a pretty dark purple that I have here. And I'm really just using it, notice I'm, I have it kind of on its side. And I'm just gently, I'm not pressing hard here. I don't wanna cover up all of that beautiful pink, um, but I want to get my values in. And what I'm doing is I, as I work, I kind of squint my eyes and just look at my reference image. And I'm really just blocking in the big shapes of dark. It doesn't matter that this um, dark pastel isn't covering the whole surface. I have sped this up a little bit or it would get a, a little bit monotonous. Um, but as you can see, I'm just kind of lightly glazing. I'm paying attention to where the dark areas are. I am gonna use another dark um, to go over this as well. And um, again, this is, this is where we start pastel painting, okay? We've got that nice, underpainting and I don't want to cover up the whole underpainting sometimes you do you know when you're working you just get carried away but it's really nice when you can kind of let some of that um, beautiful uh, color underneath peek through especially when it's um, so different from the main colors of your final painting um, okay so you can kind of watch me work here as I'm looking at I'm kind of looking at some of the shadows now and the edges of the road and uh, blocking in to get a guide for the rest of the painting. Now I'm going to allow this to finish up here where I'm uh, basically just getting in the darks. And then for the rest of the video, I've been doing a voiceover right now, but for the rest of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and include my commentary as I work on the pastel portion of this painting. So you will be hearing what I was actually saying as I was painting. So I thought you guys might like that. And again, this is uh, the videos that I'm doing hopefully once a month. That's my goal for my patrons and my patron group. And if you want to know a little bit more about that, it's, it's uh, www.patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. And I only have one tier. Some artists have a lot of tier and it's pretty much an appreciation tier, but I have can't help it. I have to give you guys more. So I'm trying to give more instruction and video for my patrons than on my regular Monet Cafe YouTube channel. But I won't forget you guys in Monet Cafe. I will continue to bring you guys free videos as well. Now I'm gonna use this, um, I'm still getting some darks and I'm gonna use a little bit of this um, kind of a, a medium to darker value purple to kind of, it's not quite as dark at the tops of these bushes. I am going to add some green to it, but um, this is going to kind of um, make it look like they have a little bit more light on them than, um, than the ones way down so deep. So notice I'm not even doing any green yet. Okay, I've got a little bit more of that deeper, um, there's some trees back here that look like they're dark, but if we wanna push them back, we need to not go as dark as that. And then there's some more back here. There's a little layer, remember I talked about the layers? There's a layer of trees here. And again, this is more of a neutral color. I'm doing that because I don't want that to be the central focus. And there's, I don't wanna lose the road. In here, there's a little bit more of that, like right in here, okay? And then um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of get a little bit of the same thing here. We've got this um, darker um, medium to dark value going on down here. We're going to add the greens in here, but it's okay to get that darkest dark. Again, we um, the darker values down first. Again, in pastel painting, we paint dark to light. And um, we layer in uh, the lightest colors last. Again, this, um, this underpainting is helping me to remember kind of where things are. I've got some shadows going on in here. A little bit more of a um, edges of grasses right here. 
And it may look crazy right now. Doesn't that look crazy? And again, we've got some more cooler shadowies crossing here. Same right back in here. Um, kind of coming down on the bank a little bit where, where these shadows are. This one kind of comes over like a hump right here and then crosses the road. We can kind of reshape these as we go. You want to get it generally right. Okay, so there's the darks. Now, I did want to get in some of this dark. I think um, things are much more interesting when you have um, multiple colors of darks. And because this tree right in here, I can't tell in the photo. It looks like this one may be a little closer than, uh, definitely than these. I probably need to bring the, the roots down a little more here. Bring it down or whatever this is to make it appear closer. And um, when things are closer, they're usually a little warmer in um, color temperature. So I'm adding a little bit of this warmth in here. This is warmer, obviously, than the other color I put down. Um, I might add a little bit of that in here. Maybe not as much over here. I want the eye to come be drawn in here. All right. Now, I think I'll go ahead and start getting in my lightest light. And the reason for that is because um, your um, everything changes in value and color based on what it's next to. And I um, probably didn't need to add that warm in that. Um, and if I don't get my light down first, I don't have a, a gauge, uh, a, a degree between light and dark. So first I'm gonna start with this um, this real um, teal blue, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna layer all over this. This is a little too dark right now, but that's okay. We usually start with this dark. There's a neat little sky hole, kind of like back in there. See, I just make a hint. You don't have to make any specific lines or anything. I'm looking at just where the shapes are. I'm kind of turning my pastel, seeing where these little um, things kind of come and go. I may add, some, I think I have to add some of those uh, different, not so dark, but a kind of a general neutral color for some of these um, trees before I finish putting these sky holes in or anything. But I like that. I like that. Um, I like this teal color. It's really neat. Um, on that note, um, I am going to go ahead and add that. Um, kind of a, let's see it here. I'm going to add it darker than it looks like in the photo. These are those, um, those leaf colors, leaf colors <laughs> that um, I kind of want to get in that I'll carve the um, sky into. Again, it looks like I'm, the, it, in the reference photo, there's a lot of sky with little sparse things, but it's going to look much more artistic if I don't try to make it look like individual leaves, but more like um, there's a little bit of that color going on back here in these bushes, or whatever they are. It's like a tangle of trees. So we'll, we'll carve the sky into this. There's a lot of sky going on here, but that's okay. I can pull that out. And notice I'm just, I'm scumbling. I am not painting leaves. We do have some of this kind of coming across the road here. I'm going to add some highlights on this. I do want to add a little bit more of these back here, back behind there, but not too much to cover up what's going on right here. We've got on this side, there's a little bit of light hitting here on, the, on this grouping of trees. Um, and the difference, I think, between realism and um, painterly is that with painterly, you just suggest things. You don't, you don't make it, you don't go, here, I am a tree, look at me, I'm a road. <laughs> so it's really, um, it's really best to just suggest and you have a way of make, make a point of central focus, what you want, and then kind of subdue the other, the other things. All right, so let me now go ahead. I think I'll put a little bit more in here and carve that sky out. And of 
if I wasn't just doing a demo here, I might focus on getting these a little more detailed, but I actually have to go and do something with my mom. This is a lighter value. Actually, let me get some of that purple in that I talked about. This is that purple. No, nope, that's too dark of a value. I think I'll just stick with this little lighter, lighter teal value down here. So my trees are still there. Yeah, a little bit there. Okay, here you just I'm looking at where it's lighter in the photo and it's definitely lighter in this little area down here. And then when I get those other background trees, I can kind of carve down into that. Um, it's a little lighter, like right in here. All right, that's pretty good there. I don't want to get too detailed too quickly. I did have this lavender that I had talked about that I, I may lighten the sky up a little. Well, I'll just go ahead and do it a little bit right here. Okay, that draws the eye back there um, with that lighter contrast there. All right, so now I'm going to focus on getting some of these background layers. Remember I talked about the power of neutrals. Let's see, this might not be dark enough. Usually, well, that's a nice color, but I think I need a darker um, color for those background trees. Yeah, this is, this is kind of, it's not as dark as some of these darks I put down, but it's going to give me a base. I want to remember where my road is. It ends like right about back there. So let me get some of these in. And then I'll add that that neutral kind of on top of that. Okay, let's see, how high did that go? Yeah, that's about right. All right, so here's that neutral I talked about, and it might still be too light. Do I have a, I have a neutral that's a little darker than that. Let me try that. It's in between these three. That's a little too green for background. This is the one I think I had. Let me try this one here. I may want to... Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to kind of lightly scumble over this. This is going to push those trees back a little more. I'm still keeping some dark down at the roots, okay? But that kind of gives just a little bit of an indication there. All right, so now I want, what I want to do is I want to get these spaces filled in before I get too fussy on anything. I may take this um, pipe foam insulation. This isn't the one I normally use, but um, I found it literally when my husband was working with some pipe foam insulation. I said, hey, I've never had that before. Let me try it. Make sure I'm still recording. Yes, I am. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I don't want this to be the central it's working center of interest here. So I'm going to kind of, um, again, just stumbling in to soften up areas that I don't want the main focus to be on. And I want to be a little cautious of this, not too, not too much. Okay, and that's something you're not supposed to do is blow on your pastels, but whoops, I did it. Oh, and by the way, my stuff is working here. It did not um, cover up, uh, I mean, it didn't go through there. All right, so now I think I'm going to take, I like that pink showing through, but I'm going to soften this shadow out a little bit right here, and then I'm going to let my, my greens kind of come through here. I mean, uh, go on top of that as a layer. I think I need another layer of dark right in here to reinforce, reinforce that. The remainder of this demo is going to be sped up a bit. 
uh, oh, there's those purple shadows or purple within the shadows that I talked about. Um, but some of it has to do with the fact that I don't have the fastest Wi-Fi speed where I am right now. And if I get a video much uh, close to an hour or a little over an hour, it just takes forever to get it uploaded. So, um, but I did want to mention right here that notice that I did add some of those blues kind of... Um, uh, and, and I did lighten up those trees with a little bit more of a blue color in the background that pushed them back even further. It's hard to talk this fast. <laughs> um, but anyway, just pay attention uh, to some of the things I said before that I was going to do and uh, enjoy the rest of this. Again, the demos or the critiques that I'm going to be doing uh, on a monthly basis, hopefully a monthly basis, is just going to be for my patrons. And I wanted to add that I probably will still share the video of the painting and some of the suggestions on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel, um, but I won't choose anyone's work to critique unless you are a patron. And very soon, probably tomorrow, I'm going to be doing the drawing for the prize since we made it to 100 patrons on my Patreon page. And everyone up to the point of the drawing will have a, an, a chance to win. So if someone becomes a patron today before I do the drawing, everyone will be in the drawing. So, and again, uh, the winner will receive a choice of one of my paintings. I've picked out about four for you to choose from. They'll also win a copy of my book, The Mountain Queen, which is a children's book. I think it's for any age, really. And also a $50 gift card for Dick Blick Art Supplies. And that will happen tomorrow, I hope. And everything's going great with my mom. Thank you guys for your prayers. She is in some of the, the yucky part of the radiation right now. And um, But still, everything's going great, and we feel very hopeful. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of this demo. And I really hope these critiques are going to be something that will help everyone, not just the artist that I did the critique for. So please, I love your feedback. I love your comments. That's how I know what to do. So um, don't hesitate to um, give suggestions or, um, you know, just uh, give me some ideas as to what you would like to see. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy and uh, I'll be back at the end for some comments. Wanted to note here at the end um, just to kind of reiterate some of the points I made at the beginning can you notice how I took those trees that were kind of sparse on the upper right and how I put more of a mass in and carved in the sky holes 
Uh, I think it made it more interesting. Also notice how I added the blues and the purples in the shadows of the road. And right now it's still a little bit dark. And that was one of my points at the beginning of the video as well, that there was kind of a mass of dark there. So this is what I'm doing here to kind of lighten that up. When things are dark and shadowy, a lot of uh, cool blues uh, kind of give a, a nice, um, fun and interesting color and can lighten up a big um, mass of darkness. This is like the tweaking stage. I've got the majority of the painting set now, but uh, adding a few more sky holes. Um, so I'm kind of lightening things up. You also can probably see where I added the bright greens on the grass. Oh, see now I added a little darker green in there in the shadowy area, but um, little hints of bright green to indicate where that sun is just hitting those grasses. Again, the sun is being filtered through the trees so that there's only certain parts with that bright light shining on them. So this was a really fun little demo slash critique. And I hope you learned a lot, Belle, and also anyone else who watched this video. So I hope you will like, comment, and please subscribe to my channel, Monet Cafe. Thanks everybody, happy painting.